All right, for podcast number eight from chapter 11, uh, we're going to cover the first of the two Mendelian laws. And the first one is the law of segregation, and I've already hinted at this in a previous podcast. Basically, the law is, just as it's stated here in the purple, the alleles separate during meiosis. Now, remember, an allele is an alternative form of a gene. And they're just going to separate as you go through meiosis. Now, if you think of the law of segregation, these two words right here, they just mean the same. So it could be called the law of separation. All right, so you look down here in this picture. You have allele number one, and then you have allele number two. And then you're going to go through meiosis. Remember, meiosis has two steps. Meiosis one, and then you have meiosis two. And also just to review, remember during meiosis, you replicate once, but you divide twice. Put an X there. So you do replication once, you divide twice, and that's what leads to reduction division. All right, so I think we got all of our uh, review in here. So as you can see here in this mother cell, you've got allele number one, you got allele number two. These genes code for the same trait but you have this form of the gene and you have that form of the gene. Because the mother cell has two of these, this one is a diploid. Remember, alleles come in pairs. And then after meiosis, you create haploid cells. Right? So one allele is going to go there and one allele is going to go here. Now, to put this in even plainer English, on the previous podcast, we talked about the allele for tall and the allele for short. So in this case, we have an individual who is heterozygous for this trait. The genotype is their tall, their phenotype is heterozygous. Well, during meiosis, you're going to make some gametes. And in this case, we're going to make the sperm cells again. Now, during uh, meiosis, they're going to make four of these, but I'm only going to draw two because I'm lazy. So the law of segregation says that half of them are going to get a big T, and the other half are going to get a little t. And let me fix that in there, make that look a little better, or maybe not. We'll just do a little T like this. All right. So half are going to get a little T, the other half are going to get big T. That's all the law of segregation is. Half the alleles go to some gametes, and the other half go to the other two. All right, we'll try this again here. We've got this. we got big A, we got small A. And in this case, we're going to make uh, egg cells. Half of the egg cells are going to get a big A the other half are going to get a little a. All right. So the law of segregation is helping you determine which alleles go to which gamete. And remember, a gamete is simply a, a reproductive or a sex cell. All right. Now, one of the things that we can do once we get to the law of segregation and have that one completely mastered is now we can deal with probability and Punnett squares. Now, probability is a term you get from your math class. It's just the likelihood that an event will occur. And in this case, or the classic case, is flipping a coin. There is a one in two chance of getting heads after each toss. All right. So if you want to get, uh, you flip a coin, what's the chance of it coming up heads? One out of two or 50%. And then if you want to do it again, uh, the next time you flip it, the chance of coming up heads is still the one out of two times, all right? Now, probability, if you're going to do different combinations, like here would be toss one and there would be toss two, you can use a Punnett square to do this, all right? So let's go up here. Here's our Punnett square. You know, I'm going to do this. I'll do this on a different page. We'll scratch that one. All right, let's look down here at this example. All right, what we have in this example here is uh, we have gametes that have the sex chromosomes in it. Males are X and Y, females are XX. So half of dad's sperm cells get an X, the other half get a Y, and then obviously because girls are XX, all of their egg cells get an X. All right, so if this egg cell, or I'm sorry, this sperm cell and this egg cell combine, you're going to have a girl. And over here, same thing happens again, that would also be a girl. If this X joins with that Y, you've got a boy, and then if this X joins with this Y, you have a boy. Now, as you can see here, what's the probability or what's the chance of having a girl? 
50%, right? Because two out of four, and if you reduce that, two out of four gets reduced to one half, which is also known as 50%. All right, all right, let's go back to our heads and tails example. And we'll pull up a different page here. All right, uh, uh, let's do it this way. We'll say H for heads. You know, let's just erase that, start over. All right, start this again. Okay, capital H, that equals a coin flip that's heads, and then we use a T, obviously, for tails. And the probability for each is one out of two. All right, so what we have here is we have two coins. Every time you flip, you're going to have two coins. So let's get a Punnett square here. You know what, let's just, uh, let's use one of our shapes. Use some of our tricks up our sleeves here. Square. All right, that's actually better than what I could do. Let's get rid of that guy right there. All right. All right, back to what we had here. Flipping the heads will be a big H, and tails will obviously be a big T. All right, with coin number one, you can either flip it heads or you can flip it tails. So this is essentially the law of segregation because every coin is heterozygous. One side is heads, the other side is tails. All right, coin number two can either come up heads or can come up tails. So there we go, law of segregation again. All right, so what's the chances of it coming up heads, heads? Right there. Chances of it coming up heads and tails, and just tails, tails. All right, now we have four boxes in here, so each box is 25%. So the probability of coming up heads and heads, that would be one out of four, because there's only one out of the four boxes, which is also known as 25%. Okay, what's the chances of it coming up heads and tails? One, two, so that's two out of four, which will reduce to one half, which is also known as 50%. And the chances of coming up tails and tails, that would be one out of four again, also known as 25%. Now, if you want to check your work, all of these need to equal four out of four, which is also equal to one, which will be known as a 100%. All right. Let's get rid of all that stuff. Now let's try it with some of Mendel's alleles again. So let's get us a little Punnett square. Pick that one. Make it a little bigger that time. All right, so let's go back to our tall plant and our short plant. And we're going to cross two heterozygous individuals. All right, so we'll do the law of segregation for this one. Half the gametes get a big T. The other half get a little t. This parent over here on this side, half the gametes will get a big T. Half will get a little t. So now once you've got the outside of the box, which represents the gametes, it's a piece of cake. All right, and if you can do your genotype ratio, one out of four will be big T, big T. Two out of four, one, two, will be big T, little t. One out of four is going to be two little t's. So this is equal to one out of four, two out of four, one out of four. The phenotype ratio, in other words, what do they look like? One, two, three of them have a big T, so they're going to be tall. And one of them has two little t's, they're going to be short. All right. That's basically how you do Punnett squares, probability, and applying the law of segregation. All right, another very important podcast. You need to make sure that you totally, totally understand the law of segregation.